we're now going to look at a few special events. The first one is called mutually exclusive events. Now, to understand this, uh, this principle of mutually exclusive events, I'm going to discuss it with you by using an example. The sample space are the numbers from 1 to 10. Event A are the numbers greater than 6. Event B are the numbers less than 5. So, first of all, let's just write down all these outcomes. So, these are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10. Event A, the numbers greater than 6. Please remember, it doesn't include 6, so it's greater than. It's 7, 8, 9 and 10. The numbers less than 5. And, of course, they must be within the sample space. And that will be 1, 2, 3 and 4. So, event A, event B and my sample space of numbers 1 to 10. Let's represent this in a Venn diagram quickly. First of all, like we did before, your sample space. Now your two events, A and B. Like we said before, we always need to look at what is in both. And as you can see, there are no outcomes in both. So that means we need to change our drawing slightly and draw them as two separate events. Because there is no outcomes in the end. So now you can look at A at the numbers 7, 8, 9 and 10. Event B has got the numbers 1, 2, 3 and 4. Are there any outcomes missing from the sample space? And of course, 1, 2, 3, 4 from B. 7, 8, 9, 10. And still not within the two events, 5 and 6. Now, always remember to check. Do you have all your outcomes in the sample space? 1, 2, 3, 4. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and we have all of them. Now, this particular example, where there's no outcomes in both events, these two events are called mutually exclusive. So, what is extremely important about the fact that two events are mutually exclusive? There are no outcomes in both. So, what will you say if I ask you the question, what is the N of A and B? The, there are no outcomes in both. So, you will hopefully agree with me it is zero, or you can say zero over ten, or just zero. If I ask you what is the B of A and B, of course, you will also tell me it is zero because it can't happen because they, there are no outcomes in and. So, what will now happen in terms of our inclusive principle? We said earlier that the P of A or B, our inclusive principle, is equal to the P of A plus the P of B minus the P of A and B. Now, what do you now know about the P of A and B if the two events are mutually exclusive? This will become zero. So now, what do we know? For mutually exclusive events, the P of A or B is equal to the P of A plus the P of B. And that, you will remember, was the question that I asked you earlier. 
when I ask you what is the P of A, what is the P of B, and what is the P of R. And earlier with the inclusive events, you, you saw that they were not equal. Now, because they are mutually exclusive, therefore the P of A and B is zero, now this rule is true. So the P of A or B is equal to the P of A plus the P of B. Please don't see this as a new rule. It is the same rule as the, what we discussed earlier in terms of inclusive principles. The only thing is, if the, your, if the problem say that these two events are mutually exclusive, you must please remember that mutually exclusive means there is, there, there is no and. That means there are no outcomes in both. That means the probability of A and B will be zero. And you still use the same inclusive principle rule and that part becomes zero and you can use this rule now to calculate or. We will later on look at examples to illustrate this.